Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today is the second half of this piece. If you'd like to see the first half, I'll have a link in the description. But today I want to talk about visual themes and starting off with your initial idea and inspiration and going into concepts and getting that idea down into all of the details and making sure that it is a cohesive concept and then turning your illustration into something that has a really strong inspiration that comes through, but also making it your own. So specifically, this piece began with me wanting to do something that was inspired by ancient Egypt or specifically Egyptian gods. I was watching The Mummy, the most recent one, and that's really what got my wheels turning. I've always loved that stuff, so it was something that I wanted to address and make a piece for. But what I love the most about being able to design a piece that's around this spark of an inspiration is I love being able to do all the research that it takes to find different details and concepts that I can put into the piece so that it has that look to it, but also being able to find ways to adapt it to my style and the way that I want to interpret it so that in the end, it still feels like a very original and unique piece. So at the beginning of honestly, pretty much every single piece that I do, I always go on a hunt for research and reference images where I can get some really great ideas. That's the thing about coming up with concepts of things that are really inspiring for me, but things that I don't have a lot of visual, a visual library in my head. That's what I'm trying to say. When I don't have a lot of that up there where I can just draw from what I have in memory, it allows me to be able to go on these journeys where I really have to go and delve into them and do research and read up about how different different things mean different things and there's different motifs within that culture and I absolutely love that. Honestly, if you're feeling very drained of ideas, I suggest doing something that forces you to really research it out. I find so many exciting and inspiring ideas from digging through these things that just I never would have thought of. I would never have come up with these concepts in my head, but being able to read them and see different jewelry, even from different cultures, or I just, I love being able to find stuff like that and let that come through in my work. But for this one, I, I wanted it to be Egyptian. So I began looking at Egyptian statues and I found some really interesting ones where I loved the shape of Anubis's ears with the way that they were really angular and sharp. And I started going down this rabbit hole of looking at headdresses that also had similar looks to them and had this Anubis ear look to it. And that's ultimately what sparked, I think, one of the main features in this piece, in this character that for me exemplifies my concept of what I wanted it to look like. And ultimately, I did decide that I also wanted it to be gold and to have this very rich luxe look to it. And I also want to incorporate that in, in several other areas where I could give it this really ornate quality to it with the color. And I felt like tying those two concepts together, the gold and the Anubis ear headdress, that really helped bring it together into this Egyptian concept. And after I got that headdress figured out, I wanted to start working on the details that reinforced it. That's usually the way that I like to do it. I like to have a hierarchy where I have one featured detail that really ties in with the concept. And in this one in particular, it has a really strong silhouette, which is exactly what I was looking for. And once I got that, I would allow myself to start working on smaller details that also reinforce that, but also details that I can include that are departures from that original concept so that I can put my own spin on it and allow myself to go through different ways of finding inspiration and different things that I can infuse into it. I also love looking for ways to include tattoos that specifically tie to the character. This one, she has a chest piece that is a winged scarab. And during my research, I found that often a carving of a wing winged scarab was included in the mummification process to symbolize the heart of the deceased. And I thought it was perfect for putting as a tattoo for her in that specific location. It was also really fun to render out that specific tattoo, figuring out how exactly I wanted it to look and how much focal point I wanted and whether I wanted to look a little bit more worn in, which ultimately ended up doing a little bit more of that. But 
I, I love that. I love being able to find ways to make a character look real and lived in and to have these details that if they were a person, they might choose to have on the way that they dress themselves or accessorize or tattoo themselves. And for the clothing on this character, I decided to go with taking inspiration of the priorities in Egyptian clothing and some of the values of that, but completely change what actually was there in the silhouette. I went with more of a breezy tunic type shirt. And again, those are ways that I can give my own influence into it so that it feels more like it, it, it exists in a world that isn't the one that we have currently. And that's one of my favorite things about mixing different ideas and concepts is ultimately it does bring it to new life. It gives it an originality that you would never be able to find if you were very specifically tying it to one concept and one inspiration and one set of history. So I love being able to find different things that tie well together. This one, I was looking up a lot of different reference for the pose and I found one that I loved and I loved the power that it had as well as the symmetry in it. And that was actually a yoga pose. And that's something that I went down this little path, I think, where it brought me to the tunic, where it wasn't an exact representation of Egyptian clothing. So it begins to have a little bit more influence of other things and a hint at a more eclectic world and things that have different influences on this character. So for the color choice, which is, again, a huge part of creating the mood and the atmosphere you want and for it to tie in with your concept, I had to work a little bit around what I would actually have naturally thought for this type of concept in this piece. So because the first half of this piece I used as a line work tutorial, I needed to use some of my lining pens that were the most full of ink and would perform the best way, which actually ended up being... A blue color so I had to work with blues which immediately off the bat thinking of this concept I would have naturally have been gravitating towards burgundies and reds and yellows and sand colors so it was throwing me a little bit for a loop at first where I wanted to find a way to make it still have those influences rather than being just totally out of left field so I actually really enjoyed the challenge of finding a way to make those two things come together. Ultimately, there were a few color choices specifically that were very Egyptian in my research that I think helps tie it together and ground it out and make sense with that. The first one, which I think I've already mentioned, is the gold. So the gold is very common in a lot of Egyptian artifacts from death masks and sarcophagus to jewelry even. So I did absolutely want that to be present. And I actually ended up going with a, it's a fine tech gold watercolor palette. I believe it's watercolors, but they're very, very thick and very shiny. And that was a huge part of the background detail. In the end, I ended up going in with solid gold and I wanted to have this like drippy molten gold quality to it, which eventually you'll see. But that was the first one where some of the details were gold and I wanted those to be unique and to stand out. And then the next color that I chose from was actually a turquoise color. I found that a lot of these scarab carvings were either from turquoise or they were glazed and they were pottery and they were glazed in a turquoise color. And that ended up being the color of her shirt. And finding those two points that really tied that into Egyptian artifacts that really did exist, it helped to make this concept really make sense for me. I could start adding other colors that fleshed out this concept and this piece and things that I needed to have there and they added variety, but ultimately having those two, it made it okay that it was working with the blues and it made it tie with the Egyptian and tie with the blue line work in a way that I wouldn't have initially thought about and I like that. I like that it pushed it out of what I would have normally have thought. And I was able to adapt it into a way that I was really excited about getting to and painting it. And I also made sure that the background, I executed it in a way that it was textured and aged. It's kind of hard to see in video sometimes, but in real life it has several layers of watercolor that add into itself so that eventually it looks a little bit more 
worn down. And the final layer that I did was I went in with a very textured brush that I love to use for adding these grungy effects. And I went in with a very orangey, warm yellow on top of this green that it ended up being. And I, I really built that up around the edges of the painting and the corners so that it looks worn down and aged and a little bit sand ridden. So that even in the execution of the background ties back into this Egyptian concept. And that's it for today. If you'd like to own this original painting, I do have a link down in the description that'll take you to my art shop. And that is just store.danicasills.com. And I also have prints of her available as well over there. I have a link to my Patreon down there that helps support this channel and there's exclusive content over there. And that is probably about it. I'll be back next Wednesday with another video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.